um, the holy month of Ravi Lawal and Ravi Lawal has lots of importance. Uh, one, because obviously Holy Prophet Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa alihi Wasallam uh, was born in this month and also he migrated from Makkah to Medina in this holy month. But we will um, continue to ponder and reflect on why it is such a holy month and what sort of blessings does this month hold. Um, but without any further ado, I would like to introduce my guest um, because obviously they're going to illuminate us about the existence of this month of Ravi Laval. So we are very glad that we have been joined by one of our favorite religious scholars, Imran Sandhu Sahib. Assalamu alaikum sir and thank you so much for coming. Um, and now moving on, obviously since it's the month of Ravi Laval and we want to resonate our studio and through our studio to entire spirituality to everyone who is watching outside in 47 different countries, um, uh, the Nate Makbule Rasul. So we are very glad that we have been joined. Uh, by the religious scholar, or rather, I would say the Nath Khan, who happens to be Muhammad Saad. Assalamu alaikum, Saad. How are you doing? So, what Nath will we today? Zameen and Zamaat. Yes, yes. Zameen and Zamaat, you are the Makina Maka Tumare Lie Chunino Chuna Tumare Lie Bane Do दहन में जुबान तुम्हारे लिए बदन में है जान तुम्हारे लिए हमारे इशारे से चांद चीर दिया छुपे हुए हुर को फेर दिया गए हुए दिन को असर किया ये तब तुम्हारे लिए गए हुए दिन को असर किया ये तब तुम्हारे लिए और इशारे से चांद चीर दिया छुपे हुए हुर को फेर दिया गए हुए दिन को असर किया ये तब तुम्हारे लिए गए हुए दिन को असर किया ये तब तुम्हारे लिए Zamino Zaman 
تمہارے لیے مکینوں مکان تمہارے لیے چنینوں چنا تمہارے لیے بنے دو جہاں تمہارے لیے جزاک اللہ جزاک اللہ and that was really very reverberating especially we felt the the word so deeply because they had such a gravity to that but now let's kick forward our conversation and start and develop it so Sandhu sahab this is the month of Ravi Ulawal right and this is the month when Holy Prophet Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born he migrated from Makkah to Medina in this month so please tell us the importance of this month why do we hold this month so much holy as a scholar from your mouth نحمده و نسلی و نسلم و علی رسوله الكریم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم لقد کانا فی رسول اللہ اسوت حسنا There is no doubt about it that the life of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم is is a is actually a benchmark for us, True. for a benchmark for whole of the humanity, hmm. be, be it Muslim or non-Muslim. His uh, political life, his social life, his uh, business life, whatever aspect of life you, 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 can, you can read about and you, you would understand that there is no possibly no best way to lead the life one's life other than the prophets how prophet has shown us or has guided us right and this is the reason allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeatedly say, reveal in quran that uh, you have to obey prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, and you have to follow him. Right. There are two words that have repeatedly come in various ayahs, ittiba and ita'a. Right. Both of these words, ittiba mean following and ita'a mean, means uh, to obey. Right. So, obedience of Prophet as, uh, is, is, is uh, absolutely necessary, so is the uh, follow, following his sunnah is absolutely right. uh, central to to the idea of Islam. Right. Having said this, in his in his lifetime right. uh, of sixty three years, not even once he celebrated his birthday, right. or celebrated the month of Rabi al Awwal as his, although it is. Uh, in many narrations, it is an agreed upon fact that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was born in this month right. and Allah has chosen this month for his birth. But in no way we should, we should forget this that every day that we live, right. we should live according to the sunnah of the Prophet. And this is the message of this month even. Right. What is neither Prophet nor Sahaba celebrated one month, rather they celebrated 12 months. Right. You take Ramadan, we celebrate Ramadan according to the Sunnah of the Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Similarly, you take, uh, you take Hajj, right. we do Hajj according to the Sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Similarly, every day. Of but, the year. But sir, uh, Sandhu sahab, it's very morally advantageous of us to claim the legacy of Holy Prophet Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we do that as a Muslim, especially living in 21st century. But what role do you think we have and what responsibilities uh, do you think we have 
on our shoulders to claim and, and make sure that we are following the hukm sharia in the first place because uh, if you witness around the world and especially in the muslim world you would see that there is this just a moral degeneration which has set in right and we often are reminded uh, of the golden days of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then the, the sahabas and how they ruled and obviously we that's the benchmark and we are far f- away from it right so what role do you recommend that we should play as a muslims as a moment as ummati of holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so that we can revert back to those golden days which we revered so much so the other day we were under a discussion in a, another program and and uh, the same uh, same question was asked and my response to this that the, that question was that you asked about the role what role should we play i think before even thinking of starting to play a role hmm. uh, in the world right we should first ponder into ourselves as a That's nation uh, collectively hmm. and and as uh, and as an individual right uh, that are uh, are we ready to play a role do we have the knowledge hmm. do we have the tarbiyah right. do we have the education system that could help us play this role in the world hmm. at the moment this umma who was khairun khaira ummatin right the the role that allah chose for this nation hmm. for us was kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrijat lin nas you were the best of the nations hmm. were, were taken taken out for the people hmm. but you could definitely observe by way of you know pondering into what is going on sure. what goes around comes around that's true that we are the we, we are the backward most nation of the world at the moment yes materially physically mm. intellectually how many research papers are muslim writing nowadays that's true intellectually in in the us i think 14 to 15000 research papers annual Hmm. with 5000 good universities right. how many universities uh, do we have in pakistan 150 universities so what is happen- happening around the world how many u- universities do we own we are doing we love maqbaras right we don't love universities and you know what prophet did sallallahu alaihi wasallam the first thing he did the first thing that when he did you talked about immigration a migration mm. of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam um after 13 years of struggle in makkah right. when he founded medina to be a state the first thing he built was not his house he resided in 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 uh, a sahabi's house right. however what did, did he build first he built a mosque masjid mm. masjid what wh- what do we do in masjid we we learn to r- b- offer salah yes the second thing he built in that masjid was a university uh, you know the university the first st- standing university that was sufa mm. so these are the two main steps he took right he did not build a army first he did not build a a um, a a a bureaucracy first he did did not build anything the first thing he built was uh, a university right and look at the, look, look the first thing that was revealed to him iqra iqra and he said ma ana bi qari he said iqra ma ana bi qari then he said iqra iqra bismi rabbikal ladhi khalaq khalaqal insana min iqra wa rabbukal akram so five times the word iqra came through wahi <laughs> three times jibril jibril, jibril amin said and two times prophet said uh, then allah said in quran so a nation that started with five times word iqra most of the people over here even don't know how to read quran save the other knowledge hmm. so how would we you ask me how would we play the role how can we play the role when we don't even know what is written in quran what is written in hadith so much so our constitution the constitution of pakistan says right. that we have to teach islamiyat Yes. Uh, uh, it it's a constitutional matter we have to read we uh, we have to teach quran hmm. we have to teach hadith right. we have to teach uh, arabic ulum mm-hmm. arab arab arabic mm-hmm. we we are not sincere mm-hmm. er, apparently in ha- in hearts yes everybody is sincere but what what about action mm. you know 
heart uh, the action of heart should be should sh should be followed by action of mind mm. and then ac action of soul mm. so we are lacking in ac on the action side we do not take action right. so uh, this this country was taken in the name of islam in the name of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah pakistan ka matlab kya la ilaha illallah That's pakistan ka tareeqa ka muhammadur rasulullah so we 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 left our ideology just to sit in the books that's very true and uh, sandu sir let's talk about for example we belong to a non arabic speaking uh, society right and quran was re revealed in the arabic right but um, and and as a child when i was growing up and we had this notion across the society that quran is something that is too sacred uh, it should be covered in a, a what do you call in a very holy sort of a cloth and it should be put on the top of our uh, drawers or, or where the top of the place in our society in a wall is right and but how do we reconcile the hukm sharai um with this very fundamental character that we need to interact with quran more and more not just you know reading it um i would say that we are reading it but we do not understand the meaning of it right and if you talk about this to people outside they will be perplexed at how is it that you can read it but you cannot grasp the meaning out of it right so how can we make sure that we are more well integrated with the quranic sciences in the first place um and we revert back again to our olden age because all of these scientists jabir bin hayan um if ever seen now what not they were doing the research but their research sprouted from the quranic sciences and hadith in the first place right quran was the base and through that they did so many fundamental researches in the first place first of all let's try to understand what's the purpose of education the now we take education with a with an intention everybody the, the environment is like that right that we take education we we go to educate ourselves for what for career building right right and why do we want to build our career so that we can earn some dollars yes that's some money true. That's you know true. the basic objective of career building in everybody's mind you know uh is and it has become we take it, it take it as an industry that's true but islamically speaking hmm. from the point of view of sharia hmm. taking education is a farida hmm. it's it's uh, it's uh, obligatory on you hmm. to take education hmm. allah's allah's uh, allah's prophet hmm. muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said طلب العلم فريضة على كل مسلم. In another hadith he says, كل مسلم و مسلمة to 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 remove all doubts that on every man and every woman, right. you know, acquiring of education is a farz. It's a, it's a, it's obligatory. Obligatory, yes. And why it is obligatory? Because it is a it helps you to do the khidma of the nation of the ummah hmm. so the day one when we we want, we go for education hmm. we should not go for career building only we right. should do it for character uh, the, the character building and, uh, and 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 giving service to the nation giving right. back to the nation right and this is the reason we were producing right such great scholars that's true religious scholars right and 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 co contemporary scholars mm. and classical scholars mm. and scholars of science and physics and chemistry and history Mathematics. you take yeah. take the rich history of muslim world when they had the renaissance it is it was directly proportional to the universities we were creating true true that's true it was not directly proportional to the maqbaras we were making that's and true. as a nation i'm 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 afraid i'm i'm sorry to say and i'm and apologize but for saying this that we, we we have started to worship maqbaras That's and this true. should not be the case we should we should create more and more universities and i really appreciate what has happened in pakistan in the last few few years we are improving on that side the national curriculum council mm -hmm. uh, is 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 creating a, 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 an education system that actually be friends knowledge that's true we have we have improved on on certain we we have started to read quran mm. we have started uh, uh, teach quran 
we have started to teach hadith we have started to teach islam in a better, better way but we la still lack uh, teaching of arabic language why arabic language is the mother of all language i would say That's because true. allah has chosen his language to be the mother of uh, other languages and allah has decided to reveal quran in that and i thank you so much sandu saab for very succinctly pointing out the problem and the flaw in which is that uh, we need to produce the students that should have a strong character building instead of just churning out students who want to go out in the market and to grab money out of that and that is where the rot lies uh, so before winding up this sex segment and going on to the short break we would request our nath khan to uh, recite the nath so that we can pay tribute and eulogy to holy prophet hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam ji saath koi saliqa hai arzu ka ना बंदगी मेरी बंदगी है ये सब तुम्हारा करम है आकार के बात अब तक बनी हुई है ये सब तुम्हारा करम है आकार किसी का एहसान क्यों उठाए किसी को हालात क्यों बताए किसी का एहसान क्यों उठाए किसी को हालात क्यों बताए तुम ही से मांगेंगे तुम ही दोगे तुम्हारे दर से हिलो लगी है तुम ही से मांगे गे तुम ही दोगे तुम ही से मांगे गे तुम ही दोगे तुम्हारे दर से हिलो लगी है ये सब तुम्हारा करम है आकार के बात अब तक बनी हुई है ये सब तुम्हारा करम है आकार and uh, with that we will take a short break so don't go anywhere after that we have a very interesting discussion lined up Welcome back and before going on to the break I alluded to the fact that we have a very interesting conversation lined up and when I speak the word conversation communication dialogue uh, it's a thing that obviously we humans are made for that uh, but there's some individuals who whether they are engaging with a very difficult individuals or navigating through very difficult conversation they very effortlessly maintain good dialogue good conversation because they're so good in their communication skills but there are lots of individuals who are introverts who feel it's difficult to conversate or to have the meaningful dialogue with others but does that means that introverts are bad communicator or people who are extroverts are very good at communication or is it something we think that the communication skills it's a very innate ability and it cannot be polished or it can be polished 
or it can be both in the first place. So we will reflect and ponder upon how communication skills is extremely important, especially in nowadays and for the young people. So we are very glad that we have been joined by one of our very favorite guests um, who has the honor of joining our studio. He happens to be Abdul Wahab Saab. Assalamu alaikum sir and thank you so much for coming to our Walaikum show. Salam. I'm so grateful for this invitation. Thank you right. so much. Right. So Abdul Wahab Saab, we see that uh, nowadays especially, so there's a wealth of information there, but there's lack of, I would say, um, listening skills, right? So how much do you think communication skills is important? Uh, that too in a digital era, because sometimes when you're working online, you do not require a very proficient communication. Or do you hold a different view from that? Aja, let me tell you, basically, you know, this is an era of flood of information. That's true. And competition has increased That's many true. fold what is happening our youth is really flooded with a lot of information That's true. at the same time what is happening we are really not training our youth for good communication hmm. we are only teaching text hmm. we are only imparting knowledge hmm. but we are not really telling them we are not telling the crux that without communication they cannot use any skill for success in life for example i would like to give an example <clears throat> you take two homes one home where all family members mm -hmm. they get opportunities to get together at least once a day they communicate well they express their feelings they express all their good and bad experiences of the day. In that particular exercise, what happens? You know, mother and father, they come with huge experience of life. Younger ones, their I mean, daughters and sons. Somebody might be in high school, somebody might be in primary school, somebody mm. might be in university. So what happens? They get solutions to many problems. Right. I mean, for example, in universities mm -hmm. or in colleges, again, what is happening? Even students among them, themselves, they don't speak. They do not share their problems. They keep every frustration, every anxiety to themselves, thinking perhaps a solution might uh, land from heavens. On this earth, we have to find solution to all the problems ourselves. That has to happen. So, the other home where people do not communicate, they all I mean, come with sort of I mean, pulled up faces, angry faces. Right. Uh, they have their own tensions, anxieties, and they do not share feelings. For example, mother and father, they are busy on their own phones, and their children, they are busy on the phones, or mother is watching TV, or father is busy in phone calls. What happens when there is no communication? The younger ones or even the elder ones, mm. even grown-up men, grown-up women in practical lives, they sometimes they get stuck with so many issues. Right. When they share the same issues with others, mm. they get alternative solutions. And we human beings, we really have to find solutions through mutual consultation. Mm through counseling and right. through so many other means. But, but perhaps uh, I would also like to link here a problem which is um, I think endemic across the world and the problem of anxiety, right? So a lot of people who are introverts, they do have a problem communicating and sometimes it gives them a lot of anxiety, especially when it comes to public speaking or talking out with someone or just going out to your bosses out there or maybe your teachers out there when it comes to the students. Um, but how do you think we can build a healthy emotional a hygiene I would like to say, where we keep the destructive forces at the bay and make sure that we are more articulate um, at expressing our emotions because uh, a lot of time expressing emotion or getting emotional is considered, it has a con very negative connotation that you're getting very sentimental or you're not able to express yourself. And how does that relate to an effective communication skills you're when right. we talk about effective communication? Hajar, I mean, your, your question is really interesting at the same time very practical. What is, what is happening? Uh, as I said earlier, we hesitate while communicating. We hesitate while discussing. Right. You know, when a person, either um, a university, college, school student or a grown-up man, 
hmm. working in a very complex environment hmm. or a woman hmm. who is having the company of say more than a dozen uh, fellows hmm. even from a company or from neighborhoods all these people need to feel first happy at home right. they have to you have to build an atmosphere at home where everybody communicates sheds out all frustrations right find solutions right. and at the end of the day they 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 learn how to be happy how to be thankful on smallest uh, gifts of our creator allah subhanahu wa taala that's true so basically when you will be happy mm. you will go out with a positive mindset mm -hmm. wherever you are mm -hmm. wherever i mean if you are in educational institution mm -hmm. if you are in an office if you are in a factory wherever you are you will interact with the same positive emotions if there will be any negativity you will really try to fight that negativity with a positivity even if a person was introvert mm -hmm. uh you know i mean the 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 trigger hmm. which he received from his home right being remaining positive right. the same trigger would help at workplace or at an uh, educational institution he or she will try to interact hmm. with fellow beings hmm. you know when 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 you have confidence in others others have confidence in you hmm. and you share ideas you try to find solutions if there are any frustrations because there could be many you know nowadays students have so many deadlines they have cut throat competition even our grown up uh, elders they have cut throat competition everywhere even as a housewife you have cut throat competition if you are preparing perhaps best korma there might be another lady who prepares better than you and your children perhaps like uh, I mean her recipes right. you see so every day you have to find uh, a place or you have to use you know so many resources to improve yourself right so basically when when we when we try our level best mm -hmm. to improve ourselves mm -hmm. to communicate mm -hmm. as we said communication is the key to success right you know i mean all workplaces where people do not communicate their objectives are not achieved even if they are achieved they are perhaps 50% you know right at the same time do those elements like frustration right anxiety mm. and headaches for example so many other factors negative factors they emerge mm. and uh, the environment at such places that becomes deadly where people really want to keep themselves away from you know a workplace and educational institution a meeting place should be one where one enjoys right but but also wahab sahab let's talk about the importance of having an uh, listening in the communication process and i do feel in 21st century nowadays listening and paying attention is an activity that is lost in our society because if you take the example of social media i mean kim kardashian broke the internet because something has gone so much viral so yeah. how do we instill a good listening in an effective communication process because obviously good listening is also a exactly. part of delivering a good result in the exactly. first place you are absolutely correct the thing is you know uh, i mean there is sort of uh, perhaps i mean we we haven't understood or we get puzzled we cannot judge we cannot find this con very easy conclusion that if you want to be a good speaker yes. you have to be a good listener that's true. you know without listening you cannot speak you cannot express ideas hmm. when you listen to people hmm. you get ideas hmm. you get feedback you get so many factors which hmm. really help you hmm. basically what is happening people think they are frustrated Hmm. their anxiety inside hmm. they have so many problems hmm. so whenever they confront any other person hmm. they think hmm. that they should speak hmm. and they should never listen hmm. when they listen hmm. they try to find solutions to their own problems hmm. listening is the best recipe True. for finding solutions That's why true. when you listen to for example uh to to news items That's to true. a show That's to a drama what true. happens so there are so many shared problems That's true. which start appearing in front of you That's and true. then you you see you witness hmm. how people are finding solutions you know so it's 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 usually i mean people who ignore listening hmm. and they just 
focus on speaking, mm. they really again complicate their lives. Right. So uh, we, we must educate them, we must sort of uh, counsel them right. that if you listen, mm. it is good for you. That's true. Only speaking is not good for you. That's true. You're conveying your message, well and good. Mm. But if you do not listen, mm. you do not get solutions. That's true. So if we are able to convince them mm. by giving certain solid examples, right. I'm 100% sure that they will change their focus from speaking only yes. to listening also. And that is where I would like to conclude this argument that hearing and listening are two very different activities because listening means you're mindfully engaging in the conversation and hearing means that a lot of times you're mindlessly listening to the conversation. And uh, this reminds me one of the quote of my professor because he used to say that language is the development that has a red, lot of destruction among the humankind because a lot of problem arises because of the misperception or miscommunication. So it is essential for the effective communication that you listen properly and pay attention to what other is saying, not just because you want to listen what you want to hear in the first place. So thank you so much, Fahab Saab, for coming here, for having this wonderful conversation. And and we would like to wrap up this segment and say Allah Hafiz to everyone. Please remember us in your prayers. So until next time, it's a goodbye and good morning.